And now, it's time for another Dice Tower Review with Tom Vassell. Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell, and today we're taking a look at Undaunted North Africa. I've already reviewed the original Undaunted, but even though I've done that, I'm going to be reviewing this one fully today. By that I mean if you've never played the other one, don't worry about it. I'm going to explain how to play this. This is a two-player tactical war game where you have just a few units and you're fighting against another few units on a mission and you're using deck building to do so and also chucking dice. Does this work together to make a cohesive game? Well, if you see my other review, you know that I like Undaunted. This one adds vehicles to the mix. There are now tanks and trucks and things like that. Let me show you. When you play this, you're going to pick a scenario from the scenario book. So I believe there is 11 scenarios. This is scenario three. Mm -hmm. There it is. Woo! Same. Look at that. And it's pretty easy because you have a bunch of these tiles and they're all labeled with a number and then A or B on each side. And you just set them up the way that it shows you in here. Not only that, you'll put out the units. And in this case, I have some vehicle units that are in the game and they already have some people in them. There's an abandoned vehicle sitting there. And then each player is going to build a deck. So over here, you'll see that I have some cards that are set aside. And then I also have a deck that's pre-built for my team. And you know this by looking here. And all the Ds are the ones that go in your deck. And then the other ones are the ones that you set aside. Each scenario has its own specific goals, like in this one, the Italians need to destroy the sergeant and the staff sergeant from the LRDG, the Long Range Desert Group. I call them the Scorpions because that's their symbol, and that seems pretty evil, Scorpions. But anyhow, you're going to have your deck of cards, and each round you'll draw four cards off your deck. If your deck runs out, you shuffle your discards to make a new deck. Once you draw your four cards, you're going to pick one of these cards. You're going to play it at the same time as your opponent and reveal them. Everything in that card is ignored except the number at the top, and whoever has the higher number is going to have initiative. Now, in your deck, you'll start with maybe one or more Fog of Wars, and you'll get more of these over the course of the game. Those cards are useless, so you could use them in initiative because, hey, why not? You're not going to use it anyway, but it's also a one. After that, the number has no bearing, and then for each card that, in initiative order, they'll play all their cards, all three of theirs first, then your opponent. You will pick the action on your card, and one of those you'll do. So this guy can scout one attack, one control, or recon. This guy can bolster three, command two, move one, etc. What do these different things mean? And even before I explain what they mean, there's also, if you're in a vehicle, you can take the action that's on the vehicle instead. So drive two, navigate two. If you're here, suppress three. This sniper's kind of just sitting there in the back of the vehicle. But you have these different actions you can take. Driving and movement lets you move around. However, you, have, you can only move in tiles that you've scouted. You'll need to take a different action to scout tiles. You have a scout, and if you play that, you'll scout tiles. And you'll put more of these scout tokens on the board. However, every time you do that, you also will be adding a Fog of War card to your deck. Now, vehicles can only move in spots that don't have this symbol on them, so vehicles can't move through here, rough terrain. And other than that, people can move through there, although there are a couple characters who can move through tiles that even if they're not scouted. Players also have Bolster. A warrant officer here gives me Bolster too, and Bolster lets you basically take that many cards from your supply and add them to your discard pile. So I want to use the sniper more, grab some more of his cards. I want the machine gunner, grab some more of his card. You also have Inspire, which lets you take cards from your play area, put them back in your hand so you can play them again. You have Conceal, which lets you put a Fog of War card in your opponent's pile from theirs. You have Inspire, which Oh, I already mentioned Inspire. We have Command, which lets you draw more cards from your deck and add them to your hand. You have Attack. This is where you're going to roll dice and try to take out your opponents. When you attack, you get a certain amount of dice based on the attack, and the dice are going to be 10-sided dice. You're going to be shooting at your opponent's defense, which is the number written on him. So if this rifleman shooting at this anti-tank, he's 4, plus his terrain, which is 5, plus the distance away, 6, 7. So you need to roll a 7 or higher. So I roll, and that's a 10. Hit. Whenever someone of yours gets hit, you are going to take one of their cards that you have 
in your hand and discard it. If you don't have a card in your hand, from your discard pile. If you don't have a card in your discard pile, from your deck. If you don't have any of those, then that person would be removed from the game. Let's say it was the anti-tank person. Removed from the game, and their cards are also removed from the game, and they don't come back. And it's also possible to damage vehicles and to make them so that they have to be fixed before they move again. There's a lot of different things in the game, but that's basically how it's going to work. You're going to keep going until somebody wins by accomplishing the goals of their mission. Artwork for the game, I think, is really good. I really like the different characters and just how they look. It's just some neat... I don't know, there's just some neat visual effects on these characters. The fog of war. The tokens are nice. The different cards for the vehicles are really clear. And the sides are very asymmetrical, like there's only one tank. The Italians have the only tank in the game. But you get used to how each of the different vehicles works. Uh, the rule books are written really well. There's two of them. But this one is really nicely written. There's a scenario book. If you are playing and you've already played... There is a, a little bit here, if you played on Dawn at Normandy, it tells you the main differences between them. So that's pretty cool. Now, when I originally played on Dawn at Normandy, really liked the game, and I enjoyed it. I said so here. I have to tell you, though, my appreciation of the system continues to rise and rise. I am really loving Undaunted at this point in time. I don't know why the system works as well as it does. It takes a tactical game, makes it feel like a tactical war game, using mechanisms that by rights in my head shouldn't work. Deck building, chucking 10-sided dice, picking cards and using them for initiative each turn, all that stuff, good mechanical sound things, but they didn't feel very wargaming to me. But at this point in time, I would say Undaunted is the best tactical war game that I've ever played. And right now, even though my war, light war game of choice would, is probably Memoir 44, I think I would pick Undaunted over that. Undaunted tells a story when you play through it. The vehicles in this one are so cool. They're not overdone. It's not like I'm in a tank. What are you going to do about it? You have to deal with terrain. You have to scout out the territories. Um, and there's other things I didn't explain in the overviews. That once you have territories scout out, you can then control those territories and take them over. But games of Undaunted aren't very long. Games of Undaunted are very strategic in how you, which cards you're going to add to your deck. Do I want to put a lot of the sniper in or do I want to put a lot of this guy in? When do I get out of the tank vehicle? When do I drive it? How do I try to accomplish my mission? They're also full of a decent amount of randomness. Rolling 10-sided dice, getting the cards you need, drawing them from the deck. And I don't care. It comes together in a flavorful, really neat wartime atmosphere where I actually care about my troops that are on the board. And I care about the vehicles. And also, when something bad happens, I can be like, hey, let's reset the scenario and try it again. 11 really well done scenarios in the book. I haven't played all of them, but I played several of them. Really fun. How does this compare to Normandy, you might wonder? The first in this series. I don't know which one I like better. Probably, well, I should say I, I, North Africa. But I would play either one gladly. There are differences. In Normandy, it's easier to respawn your people when they die. Have more come out. Uh, there's also no vehicles in Normandy. I might play Normandy first if I've never played the system before, but North Africa is just phenomenal. It builds on that system, and it takes... There's not a lot of pieces in this game, and yet every scenario feels different. Every scenario has that moment you're like, I remember that one thing that happened, and they're excellent. You can see me and Mike Delisio have played a scenario of this live on the channel, so you can go watch a game of this if you're curious, um, and it was just phenomenal. I 
love this. I love the history behind it. I like the simplicity of setting a game up and playing it. The simple rules, the in-depth that's there. The building on the last game. The games, by the way, are not, you can't use stuff from one and the other. They're two separate games. But this is a series that I'm definitely going to be keeping an eye out. What's new? What's coming out from this? I'm just very happy with it. So that's Undaunted at North Africa. I'll give it one of my highest recommendations. This is fantastic. I'm Tom Vassell, and you've been watching the Dice Tower. Dice Tower Judgment, excellent.